Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I wanted to show you my reading journal for 2020 and kind of the iterations it has gone through so far in these first two months of the year. I have some pages I want to show you and I'll also kind of talk through some of the changes that I've done already and some of the changes that I anticipate because some pages are not exactly working out 100% how I, I plan them to be. So let me show you what the first page of the new year is looking like. So this is the first page. I kind of took it as a 2020 dumping of ideas, um, kind of like my end of year videos that I needed to make, my like 2019 favorites and stats and that kind of stuff. But it's also sort of become a place for me to dump general ideas that I've had. Maybe I need a more, you know, monthly basis of ideas, but for now this is where they're going. I still have a little bit of space, so I might be adding a little bit more there. These are kind of some ideas of what I wanted to do this year on my channel that were different and that would be go back to monthly wrap-ups or wrapping up every few books because I really didn't do that at the back half of 2019 and also something that I don't know if it's going to happen or not but I wanted to make book reviews on my channel of single books especially 2020 releases that may be anticipated by other people. I haven't done that yet. I feel very unsure about how I would do making a single book review and how I would, you know, put together my thoughts on a single book. I feel like I need to try it at least once this year to see if that's for me. And on the bottom I just put reading and booktube goals that I have. I want to read 60 books for Goodreads. I want 40 to 50 percent of it to be nonfiction. I'm contemplating getting a new camera because I can tell this one's just not as good quality, especially when the lighting is not, the natural lighting is not as good. Um, new editing software? I don't know, that's probably expensive. And I wanted to make less cuts and I wanted to allow myself to say um and like in my videos more, which might bother some of you, but honestly it takes so much time to cut every single um and it's just a regular thing that allows my brain to think of what I want to say next. We say um for a reason. So I wanted to devote less time to cutting a bunch of clips that I'm making. So here's the next page and this is kind of my qualm so far because on this side of the page I kind of used it as a journal entry of general personal stuff and I feel like I just need a whole separate journal for that, a whole separate diary for that because it didn't feel like it went well together. One of my big goals that I mentioned in a few videos ago of what I wanted to do new is to write a little bit about every single book that I read and you can see I did that for the first three books here but then I, I needed a page to write something that happened to me and uh, people at work and I wanted to I don't know, just get it all out there. So that's what I did on this page and the one after that. And it doesn't go well with my general thoughts about the books that I'm reading. I feel like it does. it's not the right place for my personal entries. So I'm still thinking about what I want to do with that because, I mean, I don't very often feel the need to, like, get my thoughts out about something that happened, but I did for this purpose. And doesn't go well with my Turtle in Paradise, other words from home, American Royals reviews on the other side. So that's what that's looking like and that's already changed because I felt like putting two disparate things together didn't really go well. Um, so I'm doing a new thing for writing down my like initial thoughts. Here's me continuing, here's that other page of my personal thoughts and then book four, right? So it seems like a very weird way to keep track of all of that, like I would have to keep passing pages to keep track of all of the books that I'm reading in the order that I'm reading them. So I wrote about Fence and then I just used random stuff here. This is me watching another video and looking into maybe I want to track this in my Excel sheet like reading stats this year. I haven't really done anything with either of those things. Now let me show you the next page, which I think is the most successful page I've had so far. It is my books read monthly in 2020 page. And this is a page that I've actually gone back to all the time to add more books um, that I'm reading per month. So I'm just making a little book and writing the title and then coloring it in with colored pencils. So that's been really fun and um, something that I've actually looked forward to after every book that I've read. I have a new dilemma that I did not face in January. As you can see, a lot of these January titles, I've used like two or three lines so the books are kind of thick. And on the February one, you can tell that I'm like making them skinnier as we go because it's currently February 23rd. So we still have five more days in February and I'm still reading in February and I only have this much space left. I've even started putting stuff on the top. 
I'm probably going to end up having to use this space as well. I've just read way more in February than I initially anticipated and when I made this page and way more than I read in January, obviously. I've had a very, very good reading month and this might not work out if my pace continues because February is only 29 days this year, so all these other months are going to have more days in February and... I might read more. I'm going to read a lot of middle grade March, which is going to go fast. I'm sure I'll read lots more graphic novels that are also things that add up really quickly on here. So this is a page that I'm thinking about, like, what can I do to make this better? Um, I feel like it's cool the way that it, you can see the whole year on two pages, but maybe it's more logical for me and my reading pace to make like monthly ones where I do like a whole February page and I can make as many books as I want. I can shape them all the ways that I want and tilt them or whatever. Every month will be a different page and it won't matter how big I draw them. I won't have to make them tiny like you see here. So I'm not 100% sure about this page yet and what's going on with it. But I really like the way that you can see everything in one glance, one whole year in a glance. Let's go on to the next page. This is an exciting page. I put some 2020 releases that I'm anticipating on this side and I blocked it off for the rest of the year so as I learn new books that I'm like okay I need to go back here and put it on the list. So for example this one here, Good Girl Bad Blood, I just put here like a second ago because I finished the first book in that series and then I realized the next one comes out in April, so April 30th. So I put that there and I'm already anticipating it. And this could also be a helpful thing to me because later into the year I can go back and be like, did I read the things in January, February, March? Definitely I didn't read all of the things that are on January, but maybe I'll feel more wanting to read it later on in the year. But I just have this list here to look back to like, oh yeah, I was very excited for that. Should I read it now? Yeah, there's some very exciting ones that are coming out in March, including Dragon Hoops by Jean Luan Yang and Stand Up Yumi Chung, which I'm excited about. Heartstopper, when it finally gets released in the United States, will be great. <laughs> so I have lots of cool things on here that I'm, I'm happy that I can keep looking at it again. On this other page, we have backlist authors that I want to try, and these are like authors that I've heard about on BookTube, people that I want to try out for one reason or another and I kind of wrote, can't really see it that well because I used this very bright pen. I kind of wrote why I wanted to try them so I can look back to them and at some point when I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to read next, this is something that I could look at maybe to inspire me to pick up something next. So I have Emma Straub on here, Lauren Groff. Lauren Groff I really want to read because she is so Florida based and I've been reading a lot of books by authors from Florida and then there's just other good authors on here that people really like. These are things for me to keep looking back to and I can keep adding here um, depending on what I hear about on booktube. The next page is backlist books to read. So it's backlist authors to try and then backlist books to read. These are books that have been literally on my TBR for 10 million years on Goodreads and I feel like I should just read them. I've started this list at the beginning of January. Have I read any of these? No, I have not. I have this one currently up in the library and I feel like I can get this one very easily on audiobook and it's one of my five-star TBR predictions for nonfiction, so I want to read it. This is Isabel Greenberg. I really like her graphic novels, but I haven't read that one. So I just have a bunch of things on here that hopefully I'll go back to eventually to read. And again, lots of space for me to continue adding on to it. So here's February on booktube. So I made myself a tiny calendar. This looks very similar to Doris Romaldi Books' calendar. I really liked how simplistic hers looked. There was like very little rulers involved and like drawing involved. And that appealed to me a lot because I feel like I won't use this that much. And things always change. When it comes to my posting schedule, like already this is wrong. I did put my February TBR up, my January wrap up, but I feel like my weekend vlog went up a day earlier. My reading journal thing I'm recording now and it's February 23rd and I kind of thought that I would publish it February 18th. So obviously that's not the case. My middle grade March TBR is actually going to be uploaded this last week, so that's not right. And my February wrap up, I've already posted part one of that wrap up and I posted it on the 22nd. So these two are kind of flipped basically. And then on the bottom here I'm just keeping ideas of things that I might want to record. Like middle grade March is coming up soon. I also made a weekend reading and snow vlog and my February wrap up. So 
kind of just like a simplistic look. As you can tell, there's a reason I'm writing these in pencil because I'm going to erase and change it up, but it's a good way to kind of plan out and to see am I like posting too many videos on the same week? Am I not posting anything? And maybe I can keep better on top of that this year. So I wanted to put the February on booktube calendar on this side because I wanted to put what I'm reading on the opposite side in February. So, so this is kind of the second iteration of the page I showed you earlier, which was this one. So this wasn't working for me. I didn't like how it was going with my like other stuff that I was writing. I wanted it in all one central place. That's why I did this. And basically I started writing smaller. I started writing less and I'm trying to keep it all on the same kind of pages. So, so right here are the first 10 things that I wrote in February, just my initial star rating and thoughts. And this is what I pulled from when I made my February wrap up part one. Um, that's helpful to me just to have it all on a single page. That way I don't forget anything. I don't have to look on my computer to see what I rated things on Goodreads or what I thought about them on Goodreads. And here's the opposite side of that. So this is me continuing. I'm on book 17 by now. I'm writing even smaller it looks like. We'll see how many books I end up finishing in February. Hopefully this is enough space because there is not another page for me to continue on my February reading, right? I wanted to keep it in one central place. But I think this will be good. I feel like this is enough for the rest of the month. I only have five more days. I can't imagine I will read that many more books. <laughs> so that's good. And then on this opposite side, I have my middle grade March 2020 kind of planning page. A lot of stuff has happened. I wrote in pencil a lot, as you can see there, because I wanted to be able to erase and change things up. My challenges, so I wrote out the challenges and I wrote that in pen that I couldn't erase. And then I wrote underneath in pencil like things that I could read to meet those challenges. And then I wrote down other things, like other things that I would like to read that don't meet the challenges, the group read, and when the read end date is on Twitter. Then down here kind of started putting a recommendations. I didn't know if I wanted to make a recommendations video for middle grade March based on the challenges. I don't think I'm going to do that, but it was just a, a place for me to start dumping books that I have read that I would have met these challenges. And then on the left here, I didn't have any more space. Again, it's one of those pages where I feel like I needed a second page and I didn't have one. So that's why this is tiny on this left side here. I wrote down my final TBR, which includes the books and the challenges, and I wrote down like what challenge it would meet. And then other books that I'm interested in that don't meet the challenges. As I mentioned in my middle grade March TBR, this didn't even work out fully because there's more books and that's why I ended up doing this post-it note. I think I'm just going to end up putting this post-it note in here just so that we are aware that there's more to this page. So that's my middle grade March 2020 page. And here's the mess. Here's just like my brain going to town. <laughs> I've been really interested in my decade in reading and review kind of videos. I've watched so many of them. I watched Books and Lala's, I watched Brie Hills, I watched Katie from Life Between Words, and I really liked how they came across. It's very fascinating to me to see how what you're reading you kind of combine with what you're going through emotionally or like what year in college you were in or what you, what was going on. It's more fascinating for the three women that I mentioned because they all were like giving birth and having children and stuff. So I don't really have those markers here. I'm like, I had my first child this year. But it is interesting for me to be like, senior year, I had a lot of anxiety and I, I suffered through shingles and I didn't know my job prospects and I read these things. Some of those things I felt like I read because I was feeling those things, like 10% Happier by Dan Harris. So it is interesting to see how like your internal personal issues are reflected in your reading and like how those two combine and yeah just understanding like there's a lot of over here of me starting college and being exposed to like feminist texts that I had never been exposed to before and how that like changed the way that I read. I haven't finished plotting this video and it might not come for a while just because it is one of those videos that I feel like I need to pre-plan very well. So right now I'm at age 24 so two years ago um, and I haven't finished. I gave myself another page to write so I will finish plotting that video and hopefully it'll come eventually to your feed. And then over here this is me writing just stuff that I thought of like the three main things that I took away from reading Antisocial by Andrew Morantz. I feel like this also should be kind of like a note-taking place as long as it doesn't interfere with like the pages that I want to be together but this is just dumping, idea dumping. So notes and then kind of a to-do list that has nothing to do with reading or anything like that but I just needed to write something down and this seemed like the perfect page because I feel like this page is lost now that I've already written like on half the page so that's why I ended up writing a to-do list down here. And that is it.
So that is the end of my journal so far. I hope that that was interesting to you. If you have ideas of like how I can make it better and um, what you do with like your personal stuff versus your reading stuff, do you put it in the same journal? How do you divide them up? So again, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye!